today I'm going to show you how to make this necklace I'm calling Falling Leaves. As you can see, the leaves pendants just kind of cascade down on top of each other. It's really pretty, and when you put it on, it wears really nicely, it hangs nicely. It just depends on how long you make it, how it hangs. It can hang like that if it's very long, or it can hang like this if it's a little bit shorter, tighter around your neck. So you can kind of establish how you want the thing to look on your neck. And it stays pretty much in order. Now laying flat, of course, it's not perfect because it's laying flat, but it stays pretty good. All of these beads are in the Autumn Tones treasure bag, and I also have most all of this stuff on my website, or you can use other things to do this with too, and we'll discuss that in the next section. But I just wanted to let you know that I have a mobile app called GGC Treasures. It's available in your app store. If you want to download that, you can join the groups in that on that app and you can post pictures and talk with the other ladies that are there. We have a really good group of ladies. I also do giveaways. I am right now cleaning out my bead closet. I haven't quite finished and I'm going to start just choosing a few people. I have a listing or a post in my app that um, you can put your name under and I will just start sending out some extras for free. So if you want to join the groups, I'm just going to pick a couple of people every month as I clean things up and I'm just going to randomly do that. I'm not going to advertise who it is and then they can post what they got if they would like in the groups. And I also have a drawing that I do every month for stash bags, free stash bags, which I make on my website that ha are a lot like the treasure bag, except for they're not curated. They're a bunch of different stuff. Sometimes I curate them, but most of the time it's just a bunch of stuff in there that had crystal units, components, all kinds of stuff. So if you would like to join us that are already there, go ahead and download that app and check it out. Anyway, this is what we're going to make today. Let's get started. Okay, for this project today, we will be using some things found in the Autumn Tones treasure bag. However, if you do not have the treasure bag, then you can follow along. Do not feel left out. You can find things that are very similar in size and shape in your own stash, or I do have most of the stuff on my website too. So you can follow along and do the same techniques and maybe make something a little different or something exactly the same. It's up to you. So what I'm going to be using is I have cut two four inch pieces of the cable chain that came in the treasure bag. Now, this is subject to the size that you want or the length that you want your necklace to be. I am making an 18 inch necklace. And so I have cut two identical pieces four inches long. Now, if you want to make a longer necklace, you will cut a little bit longer chain. Or if you're using your own stuff and you have a bigger chain, bigger lengths, you may need to cut less. But basically four inches is what I'm going for, for an 18 inch necklace. Then I'm going to use one of the large toggle clasps in my treasure, in the treasure bag. So this is a pretty large, it's about an inch. Let me see. No, not even an inch. <laughs> about three quarters of an inch in diameter just to give you an idea it's a pretty large one so you may want if you have a smaller one you may want to cut more chain just to get your length but this is the one i'm using the one found in the treasure bag and you can use any clasping you would like <clears throat> just know that it does affect your length of your necklace then i am going to use some it's probably about a 21 gauge antique bronze jump ring they're pretty fine gauge pretty small so that I can fit them through the hole on my leaf beads here. So you'll need a small fine gauge jump ring. You don't want it so fine that it doesn't hold anything, but about a 21 gauge will work. And this is seven millimeters round with an internal diameter of about six millimeters. And then I'm going to be using two heavier gauge jump rings. This is probably about 20, maybe an 18 gauge jump ring, just a nice heavy jump ring so that you can put your clasping on and they won't open. 
and this is four millimeter in diameter. Then I'm going to be using some of the beads, the four millimeter round imitation pyrite beads that were in the treasure bag. And you will only need a few. Let me see, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14 is what I have out. And I know I counted them earlier. So about 14 of the a four millimeter round bead. Now this can be a pearl, this can be a droop, this can be anything you want it to be. A little metal spacer bead, as long as it's four millimeter round, it'll work just fine. And this is the imitation pyrite found in the treasure bag. <clears throat> then we're going to use the, all seven of the leaf pendant beads that are in the treasure bag. You can use any leaf pendant as long as it's rather broad so that they stack on top of each other and they are drilled in the top and you can put a jump ring through the hole. Then we are going to be using the six by four or six by five, either one a six by four or six by five will work. Usually they vary in between the two sizes in a strand anyway. So um, this is a rondelle and it is khaki in color and you will need to have a strand of those. Probably not a full strand, but I don't know exactly how many, just have your strand out. You have a strand in your treasure bag. Then <clears throat> we're going to use these large 10 millimeter polygon beads and you have two packages in your treasure bag. You have all of these colors. We are going to be using the lemon green and the olive. And these two we'll just set aside. So you'll want these four out of your treasure bag. And you can use anything that you would like from your own stash. A, you could use a large bicone. You can use whatever you'd like for your crystal elements in the front. And I will have some of these on the website for you. And then... <clears throat> You're going to need a piece of beading wire. And this one I have cut about, I think it's about 13 inches long. Let me see. Yes, it's right around 13 inches long. So you will want some Beadalon 49 strand or some Softflex. I'm using Softflex medium. Either one will work just fine. Or whatever bead stringing material you have on hand that you want to use. It needs to be medium size in diameter. And that's what we're going to be using. We will also need some flat nose and chain nose pliers and a crimping tool. So gather all your things together and let's get started. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is put jump rings through the seven pendant beads. So you've got your pendant leaves here and you should have a nice fine gauge jump ring. And you're just going to open your jump ring. You're going to find the opening, it's right here. And let me rearrange and get you a little bit closer here. So there's the opening right there. I'm going to place my flat nose pliers on one side, my chain nose pliers on the other side. And I'm going to twist that open pretty wide because I want to be able to manipulate it around this pendant. Now some of these holes on these pendants are a little bit blocked or a little bit funny. So you can use like a head pin or something and just gently clean that out. Be very careful because these break really easy. They are glass. So then we're just going to grab our jump ring and we're going to put it through the hole on the pendant, just like this. And then we're going to close that jump ring the same way we opened it. Make sure you close them tightly because this is the part that's going to be on the beading wire and you don't want it to slip off. So just like that. Now you're going to go ahead and put jump rings on all seven of your pendants and then okay, we'll be back. This is what you should have. All of them should have a nice jump ring right through the top here. Now I'm going to show you because some of these usually one out of the batch of seven, but or the hole is drilled, but it's just too tight and a little bit blocked for you to put your jump ring through. I have this little head pin. I'm going from the back side of it, and I'm just going to kind of ream it out a little bit, and then from the front side. And that usually will push out the parts that are blocked. This one isn't really blocked that badly. But sometimes there's like it's not quite cut right, and there's little pieces of glass. 
Just do it very gently and make sure you go directly in and out. Don't push sideways or anything because you will break the top of this bead off. So now just grab three of your leaves and your beading wire and we'll get okay, started. So we're going to begin by grabbing one of the three beads that we have pulled out, set the others aside, and just put one of them on your wire, your beading wire that you have cut about 13 inches long and just center it on that wire the best you can it does it won't stay perfect just somewhere in the center and then you're going to pick up a four millimeter bead on either side it doesn't matter if you have the pyrite one still or not I know I've done a couple projects with them but I still had just a few and I had enough to finish this because there's a little over a hundred beads on that strand so Use whatever four millimeter round you want. Six O seed would probably work okay too. And just drop those down next to that leaf bead on either side. Then pick up one of your six by four or six by five millimeter rondelles and drop one on either side. And then we're, I'm going to start with the olive crystals and you can use whatever crystal or maybe even a, just a big round crystal it doesn't matter just something and drop that on either side I'm going to use my olive 10 millimeter polygon beads and then I am going to pick up a rondelle on either side oh come here where's the hole there it is And then we are going to pick up four millimeter beads on either side. And then again, we're going to drop down one of our leaf beads. Just put it through the jump ring, make sure that it's facing forward and put that on either side. So you've got your three main leaves on here now. And then we're going to put a four millimeter on either side of the wire here. So a four millimeter round bead. And then we're going to use our light green color polygon beads. Or excuse me, first we need a rondelle. I come here. So a rondelle on either side. And then we're going to put on our bead, our crystal. And then a rondelle. And then we're going to put on a four millimeter round. And then we're just going to do a series of beads up the side here. And I'm going to show you what we're going to do so we can do that off camera. I already have one that I have put together here. So right now, we are right here at this four millimeter round. We're going to do three sections of four well, we have two of four rondelles divided by four millimeter rounds and then one section of three rondelles with a four millimeter round. So we're going to go ahead and string this and I'll put this here so you can pause it and look at it and string it as you watch or as you look at the paused video. Okay, so I am going to go ahead and finish my sides both sides exactly like the side I just showed you and we will be back okay so this is what you should have That's what that should look like get the camera right here and now I'm going to take a little clip and I'm going to clip off one side make sure you're centered so put your two wires together and then just center everything so that you have equal amounts of wire left on either side and then 
grab your clip or a piece of tape or something to hold this side from spilling off while we work on this side. Grab a crimp tube and drop it down to your last bead here. Then grab your piece of chain. I have cut four inches, whatever you decide that you need. Drop this down. Make sure that the link on the chain is closed tightly. And then just go back into the crimp tube. So I've got my chain on here. I'm going to go back into this crimp tube. And I'm probably going to slide through a couple of beads because it's just going to be easier. So I'm going to slide through the rondelle, the four millimeter round and the rondelle beneath it. And then I'll just grab my chain nose pliers and kind of ease that together. Now I want these beads to be down tight with the other beads, so I'm going to push them down like that. And then I'm going to bring my crimp tube down. And then I'm going to establish which side of the wire is um, stable and which side is moving on my loop here. So if I hold on to the stable side, you see I can pull this loop down and I can keep my beads all together. So I'm holding onto the stable side and pulling this down and I'm going to pull it down rather close to the chain because it's a different color. So I'm just going to have a small loop, but you want to make sure your chain can move in that loop. Once you have that all established and you can push this all together tight, you don't want too much slack between these beads. So what I'm going to do now that this is pretty stable is I'm going to cut this wire here really close to the bottom of that bead and then I can adjust my loop to make sure that that wire goes up inside the beads just like that so if I need to I can just slightly pull my loop a little bit but now that I've cut that before I set it it's not going to make a division in my beads and now I can grab my crimping tool in this divot here the one closest to the handle, we're going to place our crimp tube in here. And now if you look at the way this is done, you can see how your wires go into your crimp tube next to each other. They're not crossed in here. So I'm going to place my crimping tool right to where that crease in the middle of that divot there is going to go in between those two wires. And now I'm going to squeeze and I have a nice little V-fold on my crimping tube. If I can show it to you here. There we go. Then those two little tubes that are formed around the wires need to go back into the crimping tool in the first divot, the one closest to the tip of the tool. And those two little tubes need to touch the crimping tool. So you need to place them in here sideways so that the crimping tube the little tubes that are on the crimping tube on the side of the fold in the middle need to touch the tool and you squeeze it together. And now you have a nice crimp. So this is what we have here. And then I'm going to come to this end of the chain and I'm going to grab one of my heavy jump rings and I am going to open it and I'm just going to put some clasp on this side just so I finish up this side. Then we'll work on the front of the necklace after we finish it up the chain part so that it, everything's crimped and stable. Then we're going to put this little crimp tube on this, or excuse me, crimp tube. Yeah, that's a crimp tube. Jump ring on this chain. Drop your clasping down and close it. Now, I want you to come to this side of the necklace, the side we haven't finished yet, and do the exact same thing we just did on this side. If you need to back up the video, go ahead and do that, but go ahead and crimp off this side, maintaining good tension so that your beads don't slide around because we need the leaves to hold in place. So you need to have decent tension on this, and go ahead and finish this side of the necklace and we'll okay, be back. So now you can see that I have finished both ends of my necklace. Everything is stable now. Nothing's going to move around. So I can work on my front leaves here to do the falling effect. So what I'm going to do is I've already got 
all of my beads with jump rings on them. I need to just connect th the jump ring that's on the next bead to the jump ring that's on this bead with another jump ring. So I am going to grab another jump ring and I am going to, let me get a different one, that one doesn't look cut well. So I'm going to grab this one and I'm going to open it and then I'm going to get you close, get you even a little closer. So I've opened this one, I'm going to put it on this one, and then I'm going to lift this up and slide that open jump ring onto the one that's on the leaf on the necklace, and then I'm going to close it. This allows for the leaf that I just put on to lay correctly. If you just connect it to the jump ring of the bead that's already on there, they're going to be all jumbled up and weird. You need to put something in between so that these that are on the jump ring can lay parallel and then the one that's connecting can lay horizontal and this way you get a nice ca cascading look. Then we're going to do one more on this centerpiece. So we've got a jump ring, we're going to open it. That jump ring, I don't like that jump ring. Let me get a different one. And I'm going to open this jump ring and then I'm going to put it on another jump ring and then I'm going to pick this up and put it on the um, jump ring of the bead that I just put on there. Just hook it on there. And close that nice and tightly. Now we have a really pretty little cascading look here. Now we're going to do the same thing with these two. So grab a jump ring and slide your next two on either side at exactly like I did this one. But you're just going to do one here and one here and we'll be right back. And here's what they look like connected. And then, voila, you have a pretty little necklace. All done. Let me see if I can get this in the camera a little better for you. And stabilize it. And that's what that looks like. I think it turns out really pretty. It's, it has a really pretty cascading leaf effect that works out really well on the neck. Now, it just depends on how long your chain is, how far it's spread out it will be on your neck. If you make it longer, they're going to lay a little bit closer like this. If you make it shorter, they're going to lay out like this, but they tend to stay pretty well stacked. These side ones fall a little bit, but that looks kind of cute. And other than that, they stay nice and stacked. Looks really good. Let me get you in close again so you can see it one more time. And that's what that looks like. And I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and I hope you make a pretty necklace like this for yourself. Bye-bye.